wind around the world we'll go putting on the greatest show so make sure that you don't miss out just be all right guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I got something I think is pretty cool. It is the Sony ZV-1 that has been reviewed about 25,000 times on YouTube. But today we have it versus my RX100 Mark 7. So for this video, I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the highlights of what I think is important between these two cameras. Hey guys, I'm stopping the video right now to warn you, this is gonna be a long, a two part long video. Uh, it wasn't supposed to go this long, but I'm finding out that my hypothesis, what I thought was going to happen, is not happening, and I'm surprised about the results. Happy, I guess you could say, but surprised. So stick around, watch both parts. Uh, please subscribe and like so you can catch the second part. It's going to be very shortly after this one comes out. So thanks for watching, and please continue watching the, the video. Here we go. I'm not gonna hit every spec that's out there, one versus the other. I'm gonna hit the ones I think it's important that kind of make my difference. And the reason why I made this video is to determine which one do I want. I had no intentions of buying the ZV-1 until I saw a lot of reviews. And number one reason is because I saw it on Best Buy before I was going on vacation and they had an open box around 638 a day before the price went up after the 28th and I'm like if it's any time to buy it it's right now because most of the times people that buy them either pre-order they get it they do a review and they return it to either wherever they bought it from B&H Best Buy wherever you're from it's just that's what people do I don't like doing that I don't I don't think I've ever really done that I wind up like selling mine on eBay or I wind up keeping it for a while and then sell it on eBay kind of thing. But whatever, I don't make the rules. I was very excited to save the money and now it's 800 bucks versus 638. And I'll show you the unboxing of that right now if you'd like to see it. If you don't, Best Buy open box. I have no idea what it looks like yet. Let's see, the box itself looks Okay, a little beat up right there. Other than that, okay, open it up. It says it was in an excellent condition. All right, we're gonna wrap a cord, which is the old micro USB. Put that right there. That's the most important part. And the battery. Hopefully, it's still Sony. Yep, it didn't. It's throw me a bad one in there. And, oh, the puff ball. Oh yeah, the puff ball. Now there, so let's take a look at the condition of the camera. I would guess, due to the return of this being so soon, that this is from a traditional reviewer that Okay, so far, I wish they would have turned the back to the right way if it wouldn't scratch the screen. But I don't see anything on the screen as of yet being scratched. All right, so Best Buy so far, so good. Everything pretty much from Best Buy came in it. I didn't see any flaws with the return. Uh, one thing I, I thought I was missing was the strap. And I was told on another channel that they didn't include the strap, which is kind of weird because it has the spot for the strap. And I'll show you a picture where that spot is. This is the spot where they where it should go. So I guess you can buy your own. Mm. I didn't see it in my box and someone else said they didn't have it. So if you found one in yours, let us know down below. Let's get into this review. So up front, let me just tell you right away, which you may already know, the RX100 Mark 7 is a more sophisticated camera. It has the pop-up viewfinder. It has the flash. It is built for both photography and video. ZV-1 is built, in my opinion, strictly for video with 
a few photos here and there to get you by. Why I say that is because I took this to the beach. I took pictures with, it's like taking a picture with your cell phone, especially during the bright sunshine, you're out traveling and, and you can't see very well. You're trying to look at the screen. You got sunglasses on, which don't work with the screen unless you put a clear protector on. So you have to pull up your sunglasses. You're trying to get the shot and you're guessing. You're like, ah, it's about right. Hopefully Sony's pretty good with autofocus. It'll get it, right? Take a couple of pictures, you look at them and it's some shade and you figure out whether you got it or not. You zoom in and you check it out. With the RX100 Mark VII, the viewfinder, you pop it up, you look through the viewfinder and you know exactly what you're getting with that photo. Now, so that's something really important to you that you need to make sure you get the shot, then the RX7 is for you. If that's not a big deal for you, maybe you're into more of the video side, then we'll talk about the other one later. But photography wise, the RX100 Mark VII wins. Now, let's talk about the lenses. Trade offs, right? With the ZV-1, you're getting that old school 1.8, better bokeh, better low light lens. Great. With the Mark 7, you're getting a 2.8 at its widest setting. And then you get all, all the way up to 200 millimeters. That's a lot of zoom. <laughs> I know when I travel, I zoom a lot. I'm trying to see something from a boat, from something ever far away. I want to zoom in. I'm on like maybe the Disney cruise. I'm on the top deck. I want to zoom into the characters down below or whatever. I use a zoom. If that's really important to you, big zoom, of course, the, the Mark 7. Do you have some zoom with the ZV-1? Yes. I will show you some comparisons with that. I will take these the Mark 7. I will zoom into 200%. Show you that picture. Same spot with the other camera. We'll zoom in. I'll show you that picture. And then we'll go to clear zoom, clear image zoom, which punches in even more. And then we'll see how that compares to the 200. Now, yes, at 200 millimeters, I can use clear image zoom also on the Mark 7 and punch in even more. So the 7 is always going to win when it comes to zoom. But you got a little bit with the ZV-1. It's not all bad, all right? One of the benefits of the ZV-1 over the, the 7, to me, is the flip screen. Now I'm going to show you. So there are your two screens, right? Holding the camera with the ZV-1 is much more enjoyable when you do video with that flip out screen. You can take it, kind of extend your hand. This is how I kind of do it. I will grab it, something like this, and I will hold it like this as I film, as I walk around. I think it helps stabilize the footage. For some reason, for me, it feels more confidence when I can hold the screen in my hand, flip it up, flip it down as I move around versus the up screen. Now, filming yourself vlogging on the two. Everyone has their own flavor with this. Flip up screen is great because you, you tend to look at the screen. As much as you concentrate on not looking at the screen and look at the lens, you will always kind of gradually go back to looking at yourself to make sure you're framed right and then maybe you lose lose track of what you're doing and you're and you're staring yourself on the screen and not looking at the lens and it looks weird on camera like you're not looking at you're not looking at me with the flip up screen you can sort of get away with that you can still look at it it kind of looks like you're looking at me but i'm i think you're looking at me but i'm not sure but it's good enough the side screen you can definitely tell when looking at the side screen so if you can train yourself, you can check your composition, check your frame, all right, then go back to the lens, then you're fine. The ZV-1 feels faster when I get it out. When I grab the camera, open that back screen, the camera comes on immediately, and we get rocking and rolling right away, which I do appreciate. The Mark 7, you have to hit the on button, get the screen up, and then it powers and gets ready to go. Not that big of a deal, but when you're traveling and you're trying to get the shot quickly, because most of the time it's in your pocket, Something happens, you want to film it, you want to get it out real quick and start filming. That's how it normally works in real life. The faster, the better. And I think ZV-1 wins on that. All right, let's talk about weight and feel. So the zv ones is plastic. It does have a grip. You can always add a grip to the, to the M7. The RX100 feels like a expensive device. It's metal. It's a little bit heavier. It feels solid in your hand. 
doesn't mean solid like it can take a beating. It just means it's very solid and delicate. If I drop this thing, it's going to have a dent and it's going to make a scratch. The ZV-1, on the other hand, is lighter. Hides in your pocket easier when it comes to the weight so you don't feel it. If I drop this thing, I have more confidence the plastic's going to maybe bounce versus the metal. That's just kind of my gut feeling. Price-wise, obviously, the ZV-1 is much cheaper than the RX Mark 7. And I'm guessing we're probably in a $900 plus area for the, for the Mark 7 used. So with the used ZV-1, we're still about $350 bucks difference in the used area right now. Now, 7 has been out there a lot longer. And I know they were flooding the market when people thought the Mark 8 was coming around. I don't know what's going on now with that. If people are starting to pull them back and the value is going up a little bit higher, but we'll see. All right, welcome. ZV-1, RX-100, Mark 7. Let's go inside. I did this before and I was like, why is it so dark? Well, the ZV-1 had the ND filter on. And I used to have, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, guys who have had the RX Mark V or IV or whatever before had the ND filter, there was an auto setting, right? You could put it on ND auto. It would basically switch when it thought it needs to switch for the ND filter. This one does not have that. You have to either turn it on or you turn it off. I, I would prefer to have it on auto when it gets bright sunshine, I forget about it. You could switch it on for me. When I go to a dark environment, I want that thing off because you're basically hurting yourself. So, so indoors, ZV-1 looks brighter versus the RX. That's probably amazing because of the 1.8 versus 2.8. The ISO is pumping up a lot higher on the ZV-1 versus the RX. Huh, that would make sense of why it's brighter and why the RX looks a little bit clearer. But I digress, and we shall continue. Again, battery life. Hello and welcome to the RX about to go out. It's showing me the orange slash through line that your battery's about to be exhausted. But here we go outside. They're both in active stabilization. So we'll go until this thing dies and we'll see if, if one is more stable than the other. Let's see how this transition. Again, this is handheld. Also, we have both microphones going. No external microphones have been adapted. They're both up about 20. I'll just step in poop. I can smell it. They're both at about 23 on the volume scale. I have the uh, little hat, little wind muff, little dead cat ZV1, and I have wind turned off on the ZV1. I turn it off because I got the muff on top and that's good enough for me to turn that wind thing off. Maybe it gives a little bit better sound. The wind is on on the RX window. Okay, we'll keep going to this dies. Both tracking my eyeball pretty good. There's no reason to jog. These aren't made for jogging like a GoPro type of stabilization is a man just for walking and talking so there's no jogging today you throw your ball nope this is the worst fetcher lab I've ever known she just wants to play to play chase keep away all you want to do have to give her the command you guys ready sit 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 make me look bad all right 
ready. Let's go. All right, what do you think? I gotta take a look at the footage myself and I give you my opinion toward the end. I did go over some differences in the menu and I'm gonna put that up on the screen in a little while toward the end. Nothing too dramatic of like, oh, it's missing this. It's things that you're like, what? What does that do? You have to go look it up. There's a lot of that on the Sony menu. If you guys use Sony, you like, and then you press the button that tells you what it is, and it still makes no sense. I don't get it. Sony, please fix your menu system. Make it easier. And don't tell me, hey, you can't put it on this setting because you got this manual function on or whatever. Well, then give me the option to turn that thing off so I can use it. No, then I have to go in the menu, find where that is, turn it off, and come back to what I wanted to do before. For the battery being indicated as going out, it's lasted longer than I thought it would. Here's a good transition. And it died. We'll come back. You only lost one bar. Good job, ZV1. We're at 1080p, 60 frames per second. Now, why I'm, I'm filming in this? Because there is an intelligent active stabilization on the set that the ZV1 does not have. So we'll do a walk around again and we'll see if that's anything noteworthy to talk about. Bright that. Go from this angle. Still brighter. Still brighter. Definitely does not bump up as fast. Yes, the ISO definitely does not bump up as fast on the RX 100. The ND filter is off. We're getting close to golden hour. So that means we will be taking some photos. Photo. Here in a minute. So we're walking and let's see which one is more stable. Skin softening is on low ZD1. Just if you're curious, that look more pleasing than one of the others. This is bright sunshine, so we're directly at it. You can kind of see how which camera does better, which one you like. Backlit. you walking because that was the whole purpose of this setup I do a jog just for a little a little movement I'll get you Okay, let's take some photos. 